Good morning, church. How we doing? How's your new year? Really? Okay, well, there we go. Amen. I'm glad you're having a good 2019. It's 2019, church. You know what that means. Yeah, y'all know what that means. I just like doing it and see if somebody's like, yeah. It means it's almost 2020. And one of my, my biggest questions in life gets to get answered, right? I've always wondered, since I was a young lad. Like, you remember back in the 90s? 80s babies? People younger? Not my teens. Y'all don't know. Y'all were real babies back then. You remember, like, people used to be like, bro, get with it, it's the 90s. Are we gonna be like, man, get with it, it's the 20s. It hey, doesn't just sound funny. I don't know, I've just always wondered if we're gonna start doing that at some point in the 20s, I don't know. Um, but I'm, I'm personally very excited about the new year. Honestly, here's what's interesting. This is like the first year that I've been like, like super, like woo, new year, let's do this, resolutions, all that stuff. Because like for me, the new year's great, but like, I don't know, there's another part of me that's like, it's just the next day. <laughs> Time is relative, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not. But I think what's amazing about the new year is this, this uh, opportunity that we have to, to really mark what's been going on in our lives and mark how we're gonna move forward. And so it is, it's a, it's a special time. For me and Lex and the boys, it's a really special time to look back because we've officially been here over a year. Like the new year really marked when we got here. Um, and uh, I just really want to begin by thanking the church. Honestly, this has been um, the most probably, I mean, honestly, and I don't say this just to like gas people up, it's been, an, it's been the most amazing year. Um, I want to say ever, but my memory's not that good. But it has been an amazing year, and it has been the quickest I've ever felt home in a place ever. Um, I promise you, like when I, when I move places, it takes me a hot minute. I don't. Uh, you know, I think when we left Florida, uh, and, and that three years or three and a half years we were there, like that last summer, I just started feeling like, oh, I get it here, and then we moved. And so, to, to feel like this is family, me and Lexi were talking about driving back from Christmas, and it was like, it feels like we're going home, right? And I'm leaving the spot I grew up in. So to me, that's a really big deal, and I honestly put so much of that on you guys. I just feel like y'all made us fam really quick. And, uh, and it's been so huge for us. I love raising my kids here. I love that they love you guys, that they talk about you guys. Y'all come up in their prayers. Um, you know, they, they will randomly um, talk about you guys on, on certain things like that. Um, last night, uh, uh, Adrian woke up from a bad dream and went, I need Hannah, because Hannah and Smogger had been, uh, had been babysitting. I was like, for real, not me? Okay. <laughs> You know, um, but I love that. I love that my, my you know, my, my, my kids love you guys. Um, and so that's huge. Um, so yes, we're here, we're in a new year. Um, the series that we're gonna be looking at this entire year is called All In Jesus, right? Um, and yes, we've been all in, but now it is All In Jesus. Uh, the name of the sermon, if you're taking notes, is All In Lordship, all right? and. Um, it's gonna, the, the whole question, the whole sermon is kind of predicated on this one question. Who will you make Lord this year? Who will you make Lord this year? Now, I know for you guys who are, who are baptized Christians, disciples of Christ today, there's only one answer, amen? Jesus Christ. And you're saying, I will make Jesus Lord this year. As a matter of fact, brother, I, I made Jesus Lord already of my life, all the years, did that, right? And so, yes, amen, you're gonna make Jesus. And for everybody else, maybe you're not there yet. Maybe you know, maybe you're here today and you're not sure if Jesus is Lord of your life, or you know, you know good and well, he is not Lord of my life right now. Maybe you don't know if you even want him to be Lord of your life. Here's the deal, ultimately, the answer is still Jesus. If you look over in Philippians 2, you can, you can turn to these scriptures as I go. I'm going to throw a few of them out today. Philippians 2 verse 9 says, God has exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name. And that at the name of Jesus, every knee 
should bow and in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, by choice or by just pure humbling submission under his mighty name, every single knee at some point is going to bow and every single tongue at some point is going to say Jesus is Lord. It's an amazing thing. It's, it's powerful. But for right now, we are given a choice. God allows us to have that choice to say, are you going to make him Lord today? So today, I just want to talk about Jesus. I just want to, I just want to talk all about Jesus. We're, we're actually going to be focusing all in Jesus this entire year. All right, and I'm going to talk a little bit about specifically what that means later. But let's just, let's just talk about Jesus today. And continually ask yourself as we go, who am I going to make Lord today? Look over in John 1, verse 1. The entire, uh, uh, this is going to be kind of the main text that we're going to be looking, uh, looking at. There's going to be some scriptures to supplement, but the main text is John 1. We're going to be going through the book of John. Uh, Will's going to continue to preach on that next week. Uh, just so you guys know, he's in Montreal right now actually helping their church out with some stuff. So he misses you guys. He said several times how much he just misses the worship here, misses being here, loves supporting our, our sister congregations, but is very eager to get back uh, and be with his family as well. Um, John 1, let's read. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If you don't know, when we're talking about the Word, we're actually talking about Jesus. It says that he was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the life, and that life was light of all mankind. Check this out. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now, you know, if you're, you have your little scroll, a uh, digital Bible, if you click the, the letter next to overcome, you'll see that that's often uh, translated as understood, right? The King James Version actually says, and the darkness comprehended it not. It says that Jesus came in the full glory of the creator of the universe, and, and mankind wasn't able to comprehend exactly who he was, this unfathomable, holy greatness, we didn't get it. And we actually put that on a cross. And that died for us. But, but we didn't get it then. Here's the deal. We, we still don't really get it. That, 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 that this, who exactly is Jesus, we still can't really fathom it. It says that he was the very word of God. What does that even mean? You know, I mean, we, we have an idea. I think we, 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 we get it. We know it. We know it's true. But can you really just, hey, come here and just explain how that works. Now, some of y'all are really smart. Y'all might do it. Don't. All right? Our teens love, like, if they really know something and I say, like, yeah, y'all don't know. They're like, actually, yeah. You know, so. <laughs> I'm just messing with y'all. Y'all ain't that bad. Um, but. It's, it's, this, it's this thing, we, we don't, we really can't comprehend exactly how that works. See, you have made, if you're a Christian, you've made him Lord. Jesus is Lord of your entire life, and you still don't completely fathom who he is. Or more importantly, what you have made Lord of your life. But that's very important. See, you, you, you've made him Lord but, and this is our first point, write this down, your perception will dictate your direction. See, how you see Jesus is extremely important because it's going to dictate how you follow Jesus. This year, if 2019 is going to be a great year, then it needs to begin with the correct perception of Jesus. Everybody in this room, team, campus, Something. We got a couple cameras. Summit, Cornerstone, everybody. You've got to start your year with the right view of Jesus. See, sometimes we see Jesus the man, right? We, we see all that he does because he was. He was human, just like us. He made this choice to become fully human, 
and he walked around on two feet like us and, and apparently, you know, held sheep and, and, and all the stuff that we see in the pictures, right? And we forget about Jesus, the word became flesh, the light of all mankind. We, we forget about that's who he is too. It's like when you hang around somebody who like nobody else knows is like a multimillionaire or really famous in a different country, right? I, I have a friend, like, and you got that friend, I know people who like, like, you actually don't know, like he's like super accomplished in his field, you're just not in that field, right? This is Jesus, we forget about that sometimes. So what I wanna do really quick is I'm just gonna read some scriptures about who Jesus is, and you can write them down, you can try to follow along, but just listen. It says in Revelation chapter one, verse five, it calls him the faithful witness. The, for, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. Revelation ver, chapter 1 verse 7 says, Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. Daniel 7 verse 13. He has a vision, and he says, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man. Coming with the clouds of heaven, he approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority and glory and sovereign powers. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. About himself, Jesus says in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Revelations 2, verse 17 through 18, do not be afraid. He says, I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys to death and Hades. Philippians 2 tells us that he, by very nature, was God. That means, by very nature, he exists outside of space and time. That has no bound on him. By very nature, he is God. That is our Lord Jesus. He's not just, you know, some, some guy or someone who, who had a lot of great lessons to say, or even just a perfect human. He was literally God. This is a big deal. The, who you perceive is going to have a big deal on your year. Because who we make Lord is going to impact how our year goes. Do you see him that way, church? Or do you somehow see him as something smaller? Something a little bit more watered down? It's something easier to fit into plans that maybe you've already made for your life. Something more in line with your ideology, something more in line with your political view. Something ultimately lacking power and ultimate authority. You know, this is that, that nice Jesus. The pop Jesus. You know, the, the Jesus is my homeboy Jesus. Right, y'all remember that? That's the shirts that got super duper popular. I read this whole thing about it. I don't want to knock my man's shirt, but I just pictured Jesus like break dancing and whatnot. And I'm like, come on. Um, you know, we, we have these, these, these other views of Jesus. And it, it reminds me of, 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 a, of a movie that kind of illustrates this. Now, but by the way, don't you love it? Like when a preacher's going to use a movie as an illustration, but then they go, but like, I don't know if I'd recommend you see it. But now we're going to talk about the movie, right? So there's this movie called Talladega Nights. <laughs> and, um, and in the movie, there's this hilarious scene where they're sitting there and they're, they're gonna um, they're gonna have they're praying for dinner. And Will Ferrell, Will Ferrell is, is this uh, this NASCAR racer, and he's praying. He's like, "Dear baby Jesus, sweet baby Jesus, laying in the manger, staring up into the world and wondering and delight, and all this stuff." And his wife's like, "You do know that Jesus grew up, right? He was a man." To which he replies, well, I like the Christmas Jesus. I like to pray to baby Jesus. And, and he's there arguing, and then his kid's like, well, you know what? I like to picture Jesus like, like a ninja. <laughs> like, 
you know, and then his friend sitting next to me, he's like, I like to picture him like with big eagle's wings, playing like the electric guitar, like like in like a band, like Leonard Skillet or something like that. And they and they go, and then he goes back to playing Dear Eight Pounds, Five Ounces, Baby Jesus. So, <laughs> see, we, we have these 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 views of Jesus that, that, that work for us. See, this is the Jesus I like. I like, I like the sheep holding Jesus that's really, really nice. I don't dig turn the table over Jesus. I don't talk, I don't, I don't really focus on that Jesus. No, he is Jesus, period. He is who he is. And we we choose these 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 views of Jesus that, that are less than, than, than the power that he really is. See, if we see him for that power. If we see him as the first and the last who, who made this choice to become a simple human, but is now alive forever and ever, holding the keys to, to, to death and Hades, then our faith is going to reflect that view. Yeah. Right? But if we see him as something less, something that fits, something that's smaller, something that's still a baby, our faith is going to reflect that view. See, how you see the person understanding who you've made Lord is going to affect your faith. It's going to affect the way you pray. It's going to affect your 2019. Your entire year will be affected on how you view Jesus, how you view who you've made Lord. If we have the correct view, then we're going to have the correct view of this year. You're going to know the truth about this year. You're going to understand that the possibilities for this year, for us individually and as a church, are literally off the charts because of who we're made in the name of. Who we bear the name of. He who was given authority and glory and sovereign power. He whose kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. See, I, I think that this year the difference between just another year and in a, in, a, in a truly great year. The difference between great things and the same old things, the difference between moving mountains and just, just kicking rocks again this year, the difference between 2019 being uh, just like 2018 or another day or just Tuesday, or it being literally the most powerful year you've ever had in your life has to do with how you view Jesus. Do you understand you can literally have the most powerful year you've ever had in your life? It's possible. And this isn't just like, come on, y'all, let's do it. It's because you follow Jesus. And if you get that on straight, if you recognize who it is that you're praying to when you pray in his name, and when you pray in the name of Jesus, that literally spiritual realms recognize that, then you're going to pray in a different way. Right. And you're going to pray for bigger things, and you're going to know that it's fully possible. Amen. That is what's going to make this an amazing 2019. Church, I, I really want us to see who it is that we're making, Lord, and then start aiming for great things because we know it is possible. Amen? Amen. You know, it's not just understanding that fact, but it's also living out that fact fully. Right? It's not, to, I know he's Lord, but are you ready to really live that out? Because there's the power. The second point right now is limitless lordship. Mm. Limitless lordship. It says in John 1, we'll continue in verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive, amen, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right, check this out, to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of a husband's will, but born of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Jesus came to that which was his own. 
He, he literally owned all of this. And he came to that which he owned, which he was, which he was literally, like this would not exist without him. And he allowed men to put him on a cross. He allowed what he owned to literally end his life. But here's something that's really powerful. And in doing, in doing that, he gave us who do believe the right to be called children of God. That's huge. In doing that, you have now become a child of the one God. That is a, a powerful thing. And if, and if you have made Jesus Lord today, then you bear a powerful name. And for that reason, there is no limit to what God can do with you and through you if he is Lord of your life, of your whole life. Your entire life. See, there's power in the name, but here's a question. Does every area of your life bear that name? Or have we set limits to the lordship of Jesus in our life? You know, lordship is difficult. Letting go of something that you perceive as your own is hard. It's why we're here. It's why we're together. We need help to do it. We said Jesus is Lord. We got baptized. Amen. This is great. And then we just habitually want to own stuff again. Right? Mine. Just, I'm used to it being, I mean, I know it's his, but I mean, it's kind of, you see what I'm saying? You, you just can't help it. I have to remind myself consistently that, that my, my kids aren't mine. God has allowed me the immense pleasure of raising them, but those are his kids. You know, Galatians 6, verse 7 tells us that God cannot be mocked. In other words, he knows. He knows what's going on. He is either Lord of your whole life, or he's not. And he's not, there's nothing, there's not this area that he just didn't pay attention to. He knows. If you set limits in your lordship, don't expect limitless things to happen because you're limiting yourself. Does that make sense? And we have to constantly see, we, we, we have to really determine, is that what we've done? Chances are it is because it's human nature. You know, we have to make sure that we are making sure he is Lord of every area. You know, when, when we, when we uh, count the cost of somebody, anybody that comes into the church, whether you move in, whether you study the Bible, you're gonna, we're going to count the cost and we're going to see, are you ready to really make Jesus Lord of your time, right? Of your treasure, of your talent. Are you really ready to, 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 to make him Lord of every area of your life? That area and that one too, right? That, that one, that's kind of like a me thing, right? I, I've never really had a ton of money, so the treasure thing was straight. Oh, yeah, you can be Lord of that. I mean, if he wants to, I'd invest it and then make it. You know, anyway, be honest with you, talent, and it's not because I view myself as a talented person. It's just the thing that I've... Music has always been mine. And for years, I, I struggled with the idea of like, no, that too. Right? Now, he allows me to do, it's a big backyard. God allows me to do a whole bunch of stuff in it. But at the, at the time when mom and dad say, hey, it's time for you to do what I told you to do. Right? That's difficult for me. He needs to be Lord of that area. That's the goal of this church. Luke 14 teaches us that God does not want us to start what we can't finish. That we're supposed to soberly count the cost, look at our lives, and determine can we do this thing called making Jesus Lord of everything. Don't start it and then stop it. You know, this is something that, that we have to do before we just say, amen, yes, lordship, yes. I want the power of Jesus being Lord. I'm ready to go. I did Jesus. I love Jesus. Yes. See, that's most of us. That's a lot of us. We hear the good news and we want that because it is good, amen? 
You hear about Jesus, and you want to be around Jesus, and you want that. But here's the deal. Sometimes we need to stop and reflect and think about ourselves before we say we're ready to go. Right? When I moved here, um, I was so incredibly excited. Right? I remember visiting like 100 times, and then eventually moving, and meeting the teens, and meeting you guys, and I was like, Will, let, shoot, I'm so ready, like, I want to do everything, let's, let's, let's go, you know, let me meet the teens today, and, and I just, I wanted to go, and, and, and I remember um, not being aware of that there were things in my life that were just not even wrong, just out of whack. I wanted to hit the ground running, but these things were going to make it tough to run. And, and I got the advice to say, hey, bro, amen, yes, I'm glad you're here, praise God. How about you just get your ducks in a row first so that you'll be able to do this thing? And that was incredibly, incredibly uh, uh, difficult for me. I, um, like, I, I got told to do it, I got discipled about it, and then I just, I think I got rebuked. It was like approaching rebuke. <laughs> bro! Like, have you set up the things in your life that are going to help you make it through this? One of the, there were several things. Like, me and Lexi, we moved here off the mission team from Myrtle Beach a little bit uh, worse for wear, right? A little bit burnt out, frankly. Three and a half years, mission team, it'll, you'll kind of do that. And, and I wasn't really addressing that in myself, right? I just wanted to, like, go again. I, didn't, I needed to take a second. Um, our family dynamic, the way we were with our kids, man, we needed some help. I, I, I just abandoned, apparently, things like um, boundaries and bedtimes and <laughs> things like that. And we needed help. We needed the elders to say, okay, all right, wow. All right, so this, this is what an evening should look like. Because I was like, I'll put them in bed. They're in bed. They're, that's good. And then they were hopping back out. It was bad. <laughs> But it's been a whole year of getting help in that area, but it's been good for me. You know, I, I, I several times in my life, have battled, battled with bouts of depression. Right? When you're dealing with your mental, emotional health, you've got to treat it like real health. And I don't want to do that. I want to go. I hate being sidelined by depression. And if there's one thing that's hard for me is that. But to stop and, 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 even, and even work on that and say, okay, you know what, amen, let me, let me treat this the right way. Because it, it, can, it, can, it can take out the whole process, amen? Health stuff, I know I'm, I'm one of probably like 60 million Americans right now being like, this year, dropping some LBs, right? <laughs> but this year, I'm dropping some LBs, all right? <laughs> even things like that, but not just like, you know, like appearance, like really, like I'm just thinking about stuff like, man, like do I really... Do I go to the doctor regularly? No. Right? I'm, like, I'm gonna get me a doc. I got a doctor, y'all. Like, and not like the one that you just go to when you're like, like I used to think the ER was like my doctor. Like Medi Clinic was my doctor. Do, 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 do. I'm, I'm real sick. Can I get some more help? No, I got one, I know her name is great. You know? See, here's the deal. As a church, moving forward this year. We need to, before we just hop into 2019 and say, okay, we're down, all in Jesus, all in Lordship, let's go, let's hit the ground running, because this could be an absolutely amazing year for the church. I believe we are set up, I can see things like right over the hill and I want to run to it, but let's first stop and make sure that we're where we need to be going into this year. One of the things that we're going to be doing as a church and, and Will is actually gonna, gonna preach on this next week, is we're gonna be doing some fasting as a church. And he has a, kind of like a schedule, I'll let him explain it to you completely, but let me, it's, it's gonna be over the course of a year, we're gonna actually fast for 40 days like Jesus did, but not all at one time, all right? Now, I'm gonna tell you the date of it just so you guys can write this down, the first one, it's actually the first uh, block of fasting is going to be from January 14th to the 23rd. January 14th through the 23rd. Will is going to preach on fasting, what kind of fast you choose, how you fast. This is going to be your choice. But we don't even just want to throw it at you real quick and be like, fast. We want you to, to do it the right way. So we're going to teach on a little bit. 
Make sure you guys are ready. And then we'll, the reason we're doing this is I had to stop and go, okay, what inside me needs to be moved if I'm going to make this? And what do I need more of if I'm going to make this work? That's the purpose of this time. We need to, we need to as a church, beginning of this year, we're going to be able to do amazing things. But let's first go, what in me do I need to address before I, before I, before I start running? Right? What in me, are there things in me that need to not be there if this is going to be the most powerful year of my life? What's going to trip me up? What about my process is broken? Let's humbly and soberly do that. If you do that, you have a choice to have an amazing year. What do I need more of this year? What do I, maybe it's just more consistent time with God. Maybe it's I need better, I need to really just get close to my relationships. Whatever it is, during this time of fasting, we're going to address those things. My encouragement leading up to this day, leading up to uh, January 14th, is start thinking of, in your own personal times, start thinking about what those things are. So that when you start fasting, it's going to be a very focused time of fasting. 2019, there's no reason why this year can't be the most powerful year yet. But it begins with the correct perception of Jesus dictating your direction. And it begins with a lifestyle of limitless lordship. As a church, I really want to do something dope this year. I want to do something amazing this year. With Jesus as Lord, I really do feel like that's possible. I feel like the Potomac Valley Church can have the most amazing year we've had so far. And I think if we do this together, we will. I'm so excited about Isabel. She gets it. She wants a lifestyle of, of that power that comes from making Jesus Lord. And she's doing what she needs to do. It's amazing. We're going to have that right after church. Fellowship for a second. Come, come, see, come see her make Jesus Lord. But let's take the time to fast so that we can truly have an amazing 2019. Thank you, guys. And you guys can stand on up. We're going to have one last song before Isabel's baptism.